Department, let's go, everybody else. Close the mistake, I'm going to go back. Party department. Hello, anybody in there? Yes, ring the bell. Ring the bell. Well, when I don't want to go down. What's the matter with you people? You deaf? Deaf mute. Did you tell them the bell was on fire? They read lips. It's all right, folks. No danger. the new bride in apartment 223 because her husband told him she can't even boil water. <laughs> He's right. What do you think about that? Very funny. Penny, is it true that the Arnolds are going to try to adopt that baby? Well, the father adoption papers last month. They should be here very soon now. Well, don't you think someone ought to tell the board about what happened? Nothing's happened, Mrs. Sorensen. Not <laughs> Penny, not this time. But it goes to show what would happen in a real fire. They wouldn't know about it. They'd be trapped and burnt to death in the baby, too. It's a normal baby, isn't it? Yes. Well, I mean, I'm sorry for them, poor things. <laughs> no board of adoptions would ever give a baby to them. Put it this way, gentlemen, it would not be proper to comment on the case still under adjudication. Oh, the prosecution may try cases in the press, but we don't. I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's been a long wait. When do you think Mr. Judd might be available? Well, you didn't have an appointment, Mr. Arnold. I tried to warn you, Mr. Judd may not be able to see you. He has a very heavy schedule. Will Mr. Judd be available tomorrow? Are you sure Mr. Caldwell can't help you? Because that's where he's leaving for this afternoon. Miss Nye, how are you? I'm just fine, thanks, Helen. How are things with you? Oh, just the same. I'll tell him you're here. Thanks. Hey, how come Mr. Judd is not Mr. available Judd? to a couple I'll of daily newspapers, here. but he is available to Banner Magazine? That is no magazine at the moment, Mr. Garson. That is a lady. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Reed. Welcome home. Ooh. Oh. Oh. You hungry? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Mind telling me just what brought that on? Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Arnold. They've been waiting over two hours. started thinking they'd better have a lawyer. And they asked me to make this tape. I'm Penny O'Neill, their neighbor. You see, Nora can't have children of her own, so they applied to be foster parents. And about a year ago, their doctor arranged for a private agency to place this baby with them. Now they've applied to adopt the baby, and that has to be approved by the County Board of Adoptions. Of course, the Arnolds have been checked very carefully by social workers, and they've been approved. But in the report, it 
has to be mentioned that the Arnold's are deaf mutes. And this is reported as a negative factor. Dan asked around at the newspaper where he works, and a couple of reporters told him that the chairman of the County Board of Adoptions, she's a woman named Mrs. Buckley, has a reputation for being kind of tough about letting handicapped people adopt normal children. So the Arnold's decided they'd better have a real good lawyer to represent them at the adoption hearing. And all I can say is, would break their hearts to lose that baby, Mr. Judd. So, would you please help them? Alita, if you're waiting for him, forget it. He'll stay with those people until he has just enough time to climb into his plane and fly to Washington. Oh, well. Ben, you know his workload better than I do. Does he really have enough time to sandwich in another case without shortchanging someone? Oh, well, we have a very simple procedure in this office for taking on too many cases. Mm -hmm. We just say, Ben, this case will interest you. <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Arnold, I'd like you to meet Miss Nye, and this is my associate, Ben Caldwell. Mr. Arnold? Yes, sir. Ben, you're going to find their case absolutely fascinating. How's your Morse code? Morse code? Yeah, didn't I read in your resume that you were a Boy Scout? <laughs> I know exactly three letters in that alphabet. S-O-S. -S. Well, tell Helen, if she gets a phone call and hears the buzzer, it'll be the Arnold's. She can take down the dots and dashes and you can translate. Don't look so worried. I'll be back from Washington on the morning of their hearing. Meanwhile, I'll have some notes on my desk. Oh, no, no, that's all right, Mr. Arnold. We'll discuss the fee later. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Arnold. Bye, Mrs. Arnold. Um, Mr. Arnold? Uh, can I drop you someplace? Where do you live? Oh, well, well, I'm going that way. You took half of what he wanted to give you just so he wouldn't feel he was accepting charity. That was very nice of you, Clint. Well, nice of you to say so. Or am I just kidding myself? No, what? You're leaving all the work to Ben from now until the adoption hearing. Oh, Clint, do you really think that's all those people deserve? Now, listen, Alita. Oh, I... oh, oh, you're giving yourself away. Mm -hmm. When you call me Lee, that means you're feeling uh, friendly. When you call me Lita, that means the mood is very romantic. But Alita, oh, that means you're vulnerable. To what? Oh, come on. You know the news business almost as well as I do. This case just could make the front pages of every paper in the country as a human interest item. You know why you never got married? Because you talk too much. Now, I'm going to ask you one question, and I want the answer in one word. You having lunch with me? Yes or no? Oh, I'd love to. I knew you couldn't do it in one word. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. I thought you'd still be here, so I brought you a sandwich. What do you mean, a sandwich? Well, that's all you have time for now. You can eat in the taxi on the way to the airport. Oh. Well, ride with me, Lita. <sighs> Don't say I didn't buy you lunch. <laughs> The meeting starts in 20 minutes, and it will take us that long to get down to the county building. I phoned the airport. Landing conditions are bad. Mr. Judd is stacked up with a few dozen other planes. Can we get going? Look, Dan, what kind of an impression are you... Look, Dan, what kind of an impression are you going to make on the board if you arrive late? Alita, you've spent a week with these people. You've done a story layout on them, right? Now, can you explain to me what makes them so doggone stubborn? Well, one of my conclusions is that they think things through a little more intensely than we do. Maybe it's because they aren't distracted by noises. 
But anyway, the result is that once they work an idea out, oh, boy, they hang on to it. And what is the idea of them sitting here? Well, you see, they feel that if they go to the hearing without Mr. Judd, they just may lose the baby. Whereas if they simply don't show up for the hearing today, the worst that can happen is their case will be postponed. Look, Nora, I... She knew that baby was crying before we did. Well, what happens when the baby starts crying at night and they're asleep? Transistors take over and vibrators wake them up. What's that? You know, I risk my nose wheel getting down and my driver's license getting over here. Why aren't you at the hearing? They wouldn't leave without you. pretty straight, don't they? I mean, he actually took time out to learn at least part of their hand alphabet. Give the baby to the nurse, Nora. Oh, sit over here. Dan, you sit beside me. Danny, why don't you sit over there so that you can interpret for Dan and Nora in case they can't see the lips of whoever's speaking. Oh. Mr. Judd. Oh, well, am I mistaken? I'm very happy to meet you, Mrs. Buckley. Uh, Mr. Judd, this is uh, Miss Ash. Miss Ash, how do you do? I'm Sidney Warner. Mr. Warner, my colleague Ben Caldwell. Pleasure. Aren't you a long way from criminal court? <laughs> Hearing is in order. This board is meeting to consider the adoption petition of Daniel Arnold and his wife, Nora Arnold. I take it that Mr. Clinton Judd is representing petitioners in a most unusual move for him. Madam Chairman, they're unusual people. Well, certainly unusual in the sense of their physical disability. I assume we've all seen it in the conditional report, the negative factor to be considered. That was included as a matter of routine procedure, Mrs. Buckley. The rest of the report is highly favorable. Mr. Warner, I don't think we can dismiss death mutism quite so easily. Mrs. Buckley, a thorough study has been made of the case by social workers, including Miss Greer and Mrs. Kravitz. I've done my homework, Mr. Judd. Well, then you know that the recommendation for approval is unanimous. This board is not bound to follow social workers' opinions, regardless of the timely propaganda in Banner magazine. What we would be concerned about, Mr. Judd, is placing a normal child in an abnormal environment. Well, of course, Miss Ash, but let me have Dr. Davis reassure you on that point. Doctor? Well, I'll begin by reminding you of what the social workers have already reported. Dan Arnold has been a linotyper for 10 years. He makes a good salary. He and his wife have a stable marriage. And I can add that they're both in the best of health. Doctor, isn't it true that deafness imposes a greater strain on the nervous system than is the case of normal people? Well, I haven't found the Arnolds to be any more nervous than other patients. Oh, Nora was subject to the usual depression, common to women who find they can't bear children. But that's all in the past now, with this baby to love and to care for. I would say she's found fulfillment. Of course, we have to be concerned with finding fulfillment for the child, Doctor. Yes, certainly, Mr. Warner. But don't forget, I arranged this placement, and I feel a deep responsibility for the child. She's progressing normally in every way. To my mind, the Arnolds have shown themselves over an entire year to be very good parents, and I strongly urge approval of their petition. No! No! No, I don't want that. Who are you? I'm the baby's mother. I, I gave my consent to him to take her because he told me that she'd have a good home, a good life. He didn't tell me he was going to hand her over to people like that. 
Well, I don't want them raising my baby, so I'm withdrawing my consent. I would like to know how Miss Kane knew of this hearing. I, I read about it in Banner magazine. You read what, Miss Kane? That, that there was this baby, this normal baby, and that these deaf-mute people were trying to adopt her. Well, the time and the place seemed to add up. So I put in a call to Dr. Davis. He delivered me. I asked him if it was my baby, and he said that it was. So I dropped whatever I was doing, and I came here. From where? Toledo, Ohio. Miss Kane, under the law of this jurisdiction, a mother who signs away custody of her child may withdraw this consent, but only prior to adoption by someone else, and then only if she's prepared to take charge of the child herself. Are you ready to do that? Uh, Mr. Judd, this woman has come here at no small sacrifice, and I think the board should listen to her. Do you object? Not in principle, Mrs. Buckley. Thank you. Go ahead, Miss Kane. What is it you want to say? Well, when, when I first went to Dr. Davis's office, I, I explained to him how it was. I wanted my baby to have a chance to be somebody. Well, I knew I couldn't give it to her. He promised me that he'd find a good home for her. I just want you to see that he keeps his part of the bargain. You can be sure that this board will act in the best interests of your baby. Miss Kane, wasn't it your own decision to give up your child? Yes. You signed the hospital release and the adoption consent at the same time. Isn't that unusual? Well, I was living in town. I, I didn't know just where I was going. Did you ever make any attempt to find out where your baby was? How she was? Well, like I said, I, I trusted the doctor. Miss Kane, these social workers will tell you that your child is a very happy and healthy baby. How can you say that your trust was misplaced? She, she doesn't know any better. Just wait until she gets older and the other kids start giving her a hard time because her folks are different, laughing at them behind their backs, imitating those funny signs they make. I know all about that. I had my own hang-ups when I was a kid. I, my folks died. I was brought up by my grandmother. She never learned to speak English. I was ashamed of her and her old country ways. I ran away when I was 16. Were the old country ways too strict for you? Look, I understand that it's good for your case to make out that I'm no good. Okay, I've made mistakes, but I'm not the only one. Sure, you, you can look at me and say, what is she, a waitress in a hash house? That's all she'll ever be. But I want something a lot better than that for my baby. I knew I couldn't give it to her, but, but I know they can't either. I mean, listen, kids, kids learn how to talk, how to behave from their parents, don't they? Well, how can people like that teach my baby those things? They can't even talk themselves. Your grandmother didn't speak English. How did you learn? Oh, I guess I picked it up from neighbors, from other kids. That answers your question. Well, I don't talk too good, do I? I want something a lot better for her. I think Miss Kane makes herself very clear. She wants the board to see that her original intent is carried out. You understand, my, my baby is normal. God forbid if, if she were deaf or dumb like them, it'd be different, but... All right, Miss Kane. We understand your position, and we won't make any decision until we've heard from others. We have here a letter from a neighbor of the Arnolds, a Mrs. Sorensen, informing us of a fire in the apartment building. There might have been very serious consequences to the Arnolds and the baby, simply because they couldn't hear the commotion. Would you care to comment on that, Mr. Judd? Well, as the board must realize, there are hundreds of accidents that happen to children every day. They swallow poisons, they suffocate in refrigerators and polyethylene bags, they drown in swimming pools, and uh, I needn't mention traffic fatalities. And all of these accidents happen to the children of hearing parents. Those children are not our responsibility, Mr. Judd. This child is. Aren't you also responsible to place the child where it'll be wanted, genuinely loved? And isn't that what the child would have with this devoted couple? Of course, that's our prime concern. A prime concern, Mr. Warner. 
not the only one. Everybody loves a baby, Mr. Warner, but not everybody can take proper care of one. I propose to this board that the child be taken away from my clients immediately for a brief period of psychiatric and pediatric study. <laughs> I think we're being treated to one of Mr. Judd's famous tactics. Are you so afraid that if we decide now, we'll decide against your clients? Frankly, yes. But more to the point, there have been a dozen cases in the past year where the negative factors were just as serious as the disabilities of my clients. And in every case, the adoption was approved because the board studied the adverse effects on the child of removing it from the only parents, the only love and security it had ever known. Now, without such a study, how can you decide in the best interests of the child? It seems that Mr. Judd and his associate have done their homework, too. Mr. Judd, Mr. and Mrs. Myers are here. Have them come in, Helen. Mr. and Mrs. Arnold, Mr. and Mrs. Myers, they're the foster parents selected by the board. We'll take very good care of her, dear. Just speak normally, Mrs. Myers, otherwise they can't read your lips. Oh, and by the way, that's Alita Nye of Banner Magazine. Do you mind having your pictures taken? I guess not. I know it's hard, but it's only for a week. That's what Mrs. Buckley said, exactly one week. Goodbye. I have a legal paper here for Daniel Arnold and I'm their attorney, I'll accept it. to withdraw her original consent to give the baby away. Oh, when can she do that? Well, under the special circumstances and on these grounds, she can. She's asking to take custody of the child herself. I've worked in summer camps with deaf children. And the reason I know sign language as well as I do is because both my parents are prelingual deaf. Does that present any special problems to you, Penny? Well, no more than my friends have. I mean, they're always telling me they really can't talk to their parents. <laughs> well, can the members of this board look at this pretty young girl and doubt that she comes from a perfectly wholesome family atmosphere? I certainly don't doubt it. Do any of you have any questions for Miss O'Neill? Well, I might have, but I would hesitate to offend her. Do you mean like where the deaf mutes are peculiar and clannish? I'm used to that one. Well, what's your answer, Penny? Well, there are sometimes. In self-defense, because they hurt pretty easily. What, what hurts them is people who just don't have that little bit of patience that it takes to reach them. Well, we'll have expert opinion on that subject. Speaking of patience, Mr. Judd, I'm running out of mine. Why aren't your clients here? Well, simply as I understand it, Mrs. Buckley, the period of separation is over. They've gone to pick up the child, and they must have been delayed. Mr. Caldwell is calling for them. <laughs> social contacts with others like themselves? Yes, people naturally gravitate to those with whom they can communicate easily. Well, wouldn't such a limited circle restrict a child's social horizons? Naturally. 
But that wouldn't hold true for the hearing child of deaf parents, would it? In contact with hearing persons, uh, communication is for the most part through the written word and therefore lacks the uh, spontaneity and the free flow of normal social intercourse. Dr. Kleefeld, parents are supposed to be symbols of strength and security. How does a child react when the parents are instead dependent? The child is emotionally insecure. Isn't it true that children identify with their parents, tend to imitate their attitudes and ways? That's correct. And isn't it also true that the very first relationships between the child and the parent, such as teaching a baby to talk, are of paramount importance? Oh, by all means. Now, if it lacks those essential satisfactions, the child becomes infected with insecurities and unsatisfied needs from the time of his first human experience. What about the insecurities arising over switching parents in the first year of a child's life? That's uh, difficult to determine. Dr. Crayfeld, one more question. Will you tell Where us what the you're devil are they? I haven't heard from them. My buzzer on the telephone. I find Even allowing for my rotten Morse code. Well, well, they're gone. Then among what do you mean they're gone? They took the baby and they disappeared. <laughs> Couldn't wait for the medical anymore. The irony is that it was all in their favor, but no, they had to go off half-cocked and ruin it. I should have known they'd pull a stunt like this. Ah, the trouble is, Clint, that when you try and build up a case that your clients are no different than normal people, and you begin to believe it yourself. Don't talk to me about normal people. I've defended too many who went off the deep end. Well, let's face it, Clint, these people were different. We, we just couldn't communicate with them. We, we didn't know what was going on. And we should have known that when you push anybody who can't fight back, either he folds up or he runs. And the Arnolds are not the type to fold up. Yes, I'll have them come in. 
Maybe we should run. Why, who is it? Mrs. Buckley and Jack Stoner at the district attorney's office. Oh, Mr. Buckley? Well, Mr. Judd, Jack, seems you're back in the practice of criminal law. Your clients can be charged with kidnapping. Is that what you came here to tell me, Jack? No, not yet. We don't want to risk alarming the owls with that kind of warrant. It's a good idea. But alarming you is something else again, Mr. Judd. And I hope Mr. Stoner will do a good job of it. Well, now, let's take it easy, Mrs. Buckley. Have you uh, heard from the Arnold since that telephone message yesterday? Mm -hmm. Well, you received a special delivery letter this morning. From where? Practically around the corner. Apparently mailed just before they left town. If they left town, we don't know where they are, and the letter doesn't say. Hmm. Do we argue privileged communication? Jack, this is privileged communication. You can argue all you like. Are you refusing to turn that letter over to the district attorney? Yes, ma'am. It wouldn't help to locate the Arnolds. It might prejudice their rights in some future case of law. Are you seriously concerned with the rights of immature hysterics who would do a thing like this? You can't reason with those people. You can't reach them. Mrs. Buckley, if they hadn't felt that was your attitude, they wouldn't have done it. Oh, don't you blame this on me, Mr. Judge. They ran away because Ada Kane petitioned for the custody of her baby. And why were they afraid that the court would give the baby to an unfit mother rather than to a decent, devoted couple? Because they feel that the hearing world consists of too many people like you, Mrs. Buckley, prejudiced against the handicapped, and too many like Miss Ash, easily persuaded. So they felt the only fair shake they would get out of our kind was to do something desperate. If you don't think they can reason as well as you and I. Well, Jack, I'm going to read something without representing where it came from. Therefore, you and Mrs. Buckley will not be able to testify to it. Is that clear? Yes. Go ahead and read it. We can see that this board of adoptions will never let us keep our baby while Mrs. Buckley is chairman. But if Mr. Warner were chairman, it might. And if the board decided that we were fit parents, then the judge might go along and not give it to Miss Kane because she can't love that baby the way we do. So it all comes down to Mrs. Buckley. And we found out that her appointment to the board expires at the end of the month. After that, Mr. Warner will be the chairman. So you see, Mrs. Buckley, they only want to stay away that long. Yeah, how's Arnold? All right, except for a broken ankle. 
Where's his wife? He won't tell us. We keep shoving slips of paper at him, but all he'll write down is your name. Dan, we don't have any time to waste. Is the baby with Nora? Where are they? Can you let us have a map? Arrest her? No, Dan. Nobody's going to arrest Nora. Then, are you sure of that? She can't survive out here all by herself. I'm sure of that. Dan, now you've got to trust me. Will you show me where Nora is? you tell people when they're going to jump. Whatever they want, it'll be all right. I'm telling her husband's all right. That'll be a good start. Yeah, oh, good. Why don't you flash it to her? Dan's OK. Dan's OK. Just keep it going.
you saying they won't let you keep the baby no matter what you do? Laura, that's not been decided yet. Are you saying the court will give the baby to its natural mother? No, Nora. No judge on the bench will give the baby to Ada K. I promise you that. Nora, you've got my word on it. You've got to believe me. Other people can charter helicopters, too. How'd you get her to come down? I told her that no judge sitting on the bench would give the baby day to Cain. Then how could he do that? Ask him. Surely he realizes that he's at least partly responsible for what those people have done. He encouraged them to think that he could get that baby for them, and when it looked like he couldn't, they... Well, they turned into kidnappers. Now he's gone ahead and made them a promise. Well, what's going to happen when they find out he can't keep it? Good evening. Hello. 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 Mrs. Buckley, I appreciate your coming here. Hello, Jack. Well, thank you, Holly. Jack, I want a letter from you addressed to Judge Chandler of Superior Court with a copy to Mrs. Buckley of the Adoption Board. To the effect that the District Attorney's Office has decided that there are no grounds to prosecute Mr. and Mrs. Arnold for kidnapping. Who says there are no grounds? The calendar. For a whole year, the Arnolds had charge of that child with no restrictions on their movements. The board took the child away for psychiatric study for exactly one week. At the end of that week, the Arnolds had every legal right to recover the child and to transport her if they wished to the top of Mount Everest. Well, it's a slight exaggeration, of course. <laughs> but otherwise, is that correct, Mrs. Buckley? Technically. Well, you may have a point. But why should I commit the district attorney's office right now? Well, because on Thursday, Ada Kane's petition for custody of the child goes before Judge Chandler. I'm appearing in opposition for the Arnolds. And it would help their case if the judge knew there were no criminal charges against them. Well, look, Jack. If you knew how much that child means to those people, you wouldn't want it on your conscience that you could have helped them, but refused. Does your uh, secretary take uh, shorthand? About the way Ben sends Morse code, but she's willing. Uh -huh. Alan, Mr. Stoner wants to dictate a letter. Send a copy to Mr. Warner, not to me. My term has only two more weeks to run, so I'm going to resign, Mr. Judd, and let Mr. Warner take the chair for the Arnold's case. Thank you, Mrs. Buckley. Good evening. Goodbye. this session in chambers, Your Honor, because I have no desire to injure Miss Kane by making public revelations, but only to show that she is not a fit parent for the child my clients are seeking to adopt. Your Honor, I have a statement here from the Social Service Commission of Toledo, Ohio, where Miss Kane resides, showing that they know of no reason to consider her an unfit parent. Mr. Tregoff, do you also have statements from Gary, Indiana, and Lansing, Michigan? We do. They show that Miss Kane has two other children, one in each of those cities. She has not supported either child for any length of time. 
Both children are at present public wards. Is this true, Miss Kane? Well, I did what I could for them. They're better off where they are than with me. But how do you expect to support this child? Judge, these people who want her, they can't talk to her. They can't even hear. That's not the point at issue. Don't I have the right to say that my baby shouldn't go to people like that? No, you don't have the right. You don't want to take care of this child yourself. You're, you're just trying to deprive others. Now, the application of the uh, handicapped couple, I don't happen to have it before me. It's up to the Board of Adoptions. But as far as giving you custody, Miss Kane, your petition is denied. Two down, one to go. Mr. Chairman, I don't think I need say any more about the suitability of this young couple to be parents. But I will say a word about their recent flight. They're taking the child into the mountains. Now, what drove them to it? The nature and tone of the previous proceedings of this board. A chipping away at their confidence and self-respect. And finally, their fear of losing their baby drove them to a point where an instinct older and stronger than any law, the instinct of parents to protect their young, took over. I think the board can see that the arms was allowed no harm whatsoever to come to the child. And so I ask that their petition for adoption of this child be promptly proved. Thank you very much. We've done a lot of soul searching on this case, and we have unanimous agreement on several counts. First, that the Arnold's physical disability is, as you said earlier, far outweighed by their abilities. Second, Mr. and Mrs. Arnold, believe me, there is no doubt in our minds about your sincere love for this little child. But the fact remains that your flight, whatever the reason for it, could have had terrible consequences for both you and for the child. Therefore, we must reluctantly conclude that this evidence of emotional instability and this lack of mature judgment casts sufficient doubt upon your qualifications. And we deny your application for adoption. I'm very, very sorry. Mm -hmm. on the decision, sir? Yes, we will appeal. No one who saw what happened in those mountains can say that Nora Arnold didn't take every possible precaution to safeguard that child. What were those precautions? She had a harness on the baby with a rope connecting it to an iron ring in a post. Nothing short of an earthquake could have budged that child. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, there. There. What do you think it's uh, Very good. All right, come on, fellas, please. Please give them a break now, please. Go for it. Then, Nora. Did you understand that we will appeal, and I mean not just to the Superior Court, but to Appellate Division and to the Supreme Court, if necessary? No, no, I don't deserve any thanks. Wait till we get your baby for you, which we will. That's a promise. Oh, Ben, I want you to bring... You want me to bring the car around because we're doing Sorrentino's preliminary hearing in 20 minutes, all right. Keep working on the Arnold's case, will you, Clint? I feel so sorry for them. Don't. They've got something a lot of people never even get close to. Each other. 